everyone, so today we are going to talk about who should pay on a first date. Everyone's got an opinion on this one and I think that the lines are quite murky and blurred and it can be a little bit confusing, but I am going to give you my honest opinion at the end. Before we do that, I'm going to talk through the common sort of ideas around who should pay and what people might think. But moreover, I want you to start to think about what it says about you if you're the person who pays or if you're the person who doesn't pay and also in what it says about you and your date in how you navigate that situation at the end of your date because I think it's quite telling what happens at the end of a first date so we are going to go through this as I go along but just have a think what does it say about me the manner in which I deal with this situation so, first of all, the most common thing that people say to me is that a man should pay on a first date. And I don't hear this from just women who want a free dinner. I hear this from men as well. Not all men and certainly not all women either hold this point of view that men should still be paying for dates. But a lot of people do still think the man should pay on the first date. I think this is for several reasons. First of all, it's a societal norm. With, it's very normal and has been for many, 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 many years, a thing that men pay. Even now, people definitely would find it stranger if a woman paid for the man. And I'm not saying that this is right, it's just very normal, so that's one of the reasons. Another reason is that often it's the man that's asked the woman out, so therefore he then feels like he should pay, regardless of what she may have ordered on the menu, whether she's picked the venue, he thinks that he should pay, he should always pay. I feel like it, this can be a bit of a problem for men, because sometimes men end up going on all these different dates, paying for dinners for women, and just generally putting a lot of money into dates. If you're someone who likes to pay for a woman, is she at least offering to pay? Do you feel like her offer is genuine? And are you okay with that? Another issue with the man paying on a first date is that sometimes the woman might feel that she then owes him something. She doesn't necessarily want to look like a gold digger. She just wants to have a nice time. And then at the end of the day, you have this weird situation where he insists on paying and she sat there thinking, oh, does this mean that I owe him something? Does this mean that I now have to like see him again? Does this mean that I have to kiss him? If if I don't, if I split, then at least maybe I don't feel like I've in some way robbed him. So I think some women do have that viewpoint of, oh, I don't know if I want him to pay on first dates. So it's very, very confusing for a lot of people. The second opinion about who should pay on a first date is that you should simply split the bill. Now splitting the bill I think is quite a good move but a lot of people think that this is quite unromantic and this can also be a bit of a problem if someone's asked someone out and then they go to an extremely expensive fancy restaurant and then you're sat there thinking I can't afford this. Oh my goodness, I cannot keep up with this person. And the best way around this is to make sure that ahead of time you know where you're going and whether you yourself can afford it. And when it comes to first dates, I think it's better to keep it simple and low key so that you both feel like neither of you is gonna be able to take advantage of the other one. I actually dated someone a few years ago and we took it in turns for paying the bill, which was a very equal and fair way to be. However, I did often feel that he was perhaps a little bit tighter when it was his week to do the paying. So you have to be aware of these things. A third one that people come up with is that the person who's asked the other person out on the date pays for the date. That way they can take you to wherever you want to go to and then you don't need to worry too much about whether you can afford it yourself. And you know, if there's a discrepancy in wage, that makes that a little bit more easy. However, this could then result in one of the parties, out of the two of you, never asking the other one out because they're following this rule and never being particularly generous. I also think it's a bit of a red flag if you are dating someone who 
you ask on a date and they want to go to Nobu or they want to go to just somewhere that's really, really expensive and then when the bill comes, they're very reluctant to get out any form of money. My final one is that women should pay on a first date. This one's really, really interesting and I guess you could argue, oh, men have been paying for women for so long, they want their they want their equal rights, they can start paying for us a little bit. Um, I don't agree with that, but I think it's an interesting perspective to have. I actually have had to tell my female clients not to become someone who pays for a man on a date because I have female clients who are very, very um, successful, they've got their lives sorted, and then they end up paying for the man. You're probably thinking, that's never happened. That's surely never happened. I can guarantee that it has happened. So when my female clients come to me and say that they have paid for their date, that's usually something to do with an inability to let a man into their lives and an inability to let someone have any control over their lives. So it's a way of putting up a real barrier against a person, which arguably isn't that healthy, which is why when my female clients say, oh, I always pay, I'm like, mm, should you though? So you're probably wondering, well, what's Abby's actual opinion on this? Because she's just like bouncing ideas around and not being particularly clear. Personally, I think that it's dependent on you as a couple because it's all about the manner in which you're able to negotiate and navigate your relationship. Couples who match well when it comes to money work better and money is the number one cause of conflict in marriages. So when it comes to the end of a date, the most important thing to do is to not have an argument about it. It's a good time to see how someone deals with a situation. Uh, is this person being particularly tight with their money? Is this person being extremely generous? How do you feel about that? That's what's important is how you feel and how they feel. And it's good that you end the date in a nice positive way rather than having a big old fight about the bill. When I was single, I would absolutely always offer to split a bill but I would never insist very very harshly. I believe that whenever anyone is pushing very hard that that's a little bit of a red flag in that they might not be particularly malleable in a relationship. I would offer to split very quickly. I would not sit there and then wait to see what are they doing? Are they, you know, do they want me to pay half? You shouldn't be going on dates to try and get a free meal or a freebie in any, any way. You should be going on dates to connect with another human being. Even if a guy's asked me out, I don't want him to feel that I'm the sort of person that's ungenerous. And in a world where we're trying to be equal, there should be more equality when it comes to dating. So thank you very much for watching today. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. I'd love to know what you do on first dates and what you think is the ideal situation for you. If you want to know more about how I coach one-on-one -on -one with my clients, you can visit my website and you can also find me on social media at Abby Blaze. Bye-bye.